Hey guys, so the other day I made a video um, how to read people and I, you know, I wanted to throw that video out there even though I didn't really care for the way I did it because I just know, I just have that, <clears throat> you know, the whispers in the back of my head uh, going, man, people are going to see this as judgmental. Um, so, but I wanted to do a a part two to it, if you will, um, because I've been thinking on it a lot since then, and uh, I think I can get the point across a little clearer. So, there are two types of people, okay? And look at Galatians uh, 2.20. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me, okay? That is one type of person. And there's another verse that says the opposite of that, but I can't remember where it's found. But basically the opposite is like Adam when he fell, uh, fell from paradise. He basically said, I no longer want God as the ruling influence in my life. I want self to be the ruling influence. Okay, so that's your two types of people. One uh, is Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. So, I want you to think about uh, who, who is Christ, okay? Now, recall how Christ was um, preaching and he said, uh, bless those that curse you. Um, when someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Uh, if, you know, someone, uh, I can't remember if it steals or sues you. Uh, I think maybe it's steal. Uh, but if someone steals your shirt, give them your coat. Well accumulate all those little things that Jesus says, okay, and also realize that that same Jesus that was alive and well, okay, you know, uh, I want to say 2,000 years ago, but I always stutter because I don't, I don't know how accurate that is, but, um, but anyways, when he was alive and walking the earth, that same Jesus is living within you when you accept Christ into your heart. Okay, so uh, that's how Paul can say it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Now, it's a, um, I guess you could say a subtle thing, but also a <laughs> not so subtle. I don't know. But if a person, uh, a person that accepts Christ into their heart, it, uh, for beginners and um, people who have been practicing it, uh, living like Christ and yielding to the Holy Spirit, it begins to show, okay, in every area of their life, okay, so that's how I'm saying you can read a person, if you see a person turn the other cheek, if you see a person bless those that curse them, then you say, hey, that's one of my brothers right there, you know, that's, uh, that's a Christian, Christ-like, um, now, on the other end of the spectrum, the, um, the person uh, that is ruled by self, like in my other video, I, I made the distinction between pride and humility because pride and humility are the roots, okay? Um, all the branches that come from it are things like turning the other cheek. That's, that's like a branch of the root of humility, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, uh, coming from the root of pride, uh, would, would not be blessing those that curse you, you know, it'd be cursing those that curse you, okay, um, uh, the root of pride won't have turning the other cheek, it's gonna say, you strike me, I strike back, okay, it is no longer Christ who lives within me, but self reigns, okay, that is the root of pride, and you can, just like you, you know a, a, uh, I'm trying to think of the verse as well, but you know a tree by its fruits, okay? You know an apple tree because it's got apples hanging off of it, all right? Uh, you know a thorn bush because it has thorns covering it, okay? That's why I want you to understand how this all ties together. A good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. You will know a tree by its fruits. And I probably said it in, in the last video, I can't quite recall, but Galatians 5. 
It's going to talk all about uh, basically the specifics of the good tree and the bad tree. It's not mentioned literally there, but that's what it's describing. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay? And then it goes on to the works of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. Okay? So, like, I'm giving you a very quick rundown of... Uh, you, I, you will know people by their actions, okay? And I know, like, you're, there, there will be people that watch these couple videos and they're going to say, man, this is so judgmental, okay? But no, it's not judgmental when it's facts. The Bible states, and, I mean, it's, it's a logic. A good tree bears good fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. Okay, so what, what can you glean from this? Um... What's, what's the point, okay? I want people to be able to recognize others faster, okay? I, I talk with people all the time, and uh, whether it's, uh, I want to say a wife complaining about a husband, but there there are those. But the, 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 the complaint will be, I don't know where this came from, okay? And my argument has always been, to, in those circumstances, uh, how, how did you not see it before you got married? Like, how did you not see it? It's something that it seems so clear to me that uh, you will know a tree by its fruits, okay? That I, I don't, I, I, I can't understand, okay? Um, but uh, other, other people, man, I can't believe that person lied to me. How, how did you not see that coming, okay? Um, it's, it's not that you had to see them lie before. Look at the branches. Look at the fruit they're producing. Okay? You will know a tree by its fruits. So, I know that this isn't really uh, probably taught on in churches because it sounds judgmental. Okay? But these things, the more you study the Word, ask God to reveal things to you. Uh, the Bible teaches in such depth, like psychology, self-awareness, um, you know, and, and, and the Bible where it says, uh, don't, don't go pick on the speck in your, in your brother or neighbor's eye. I can't remember what it's, what it says, but don't, don't pick on the, the speck in your brother's eye when you got a log in your own eye. Okay. So what that teaches you to do is to be, uh, ha have this self-awareness of, okay, I, I need God to work on me. And through that process, you learn a lot about yourself. And by a side effect, when you learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about others. Okay? When you learn a lot about your own soul and how it's influenced and how it works, you, by side effect, by default, by proxy, whatever word works best here, you learn a lot about others. Okay, so, um, you know, I tell a lot of people, and when they're like, man, I can't believe this person did this to me. You know, I was so helpful to them, and then they, you know, they, uh, they weren't honorable to it, or they weren't honest, or something like that. And I tell them, are you, are you angry at an ant for biting you? When an, that he's doing what's in his nature. Why, why are you going to be angry at the ant? Okay, so when you learn to recognize natures, that's why Jesus was able, well, it was no struggle to him to bless those that curse him because he knew that it was the nature ruling that person and it wasn't the person, um, uh, well, I mean, actually, I said it best at the first part of that, I didn't have to go on, but like Jesus saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, okay? He knows that the people of the world are blind. They don't realize what they're doing. All right? So, again, have Christ living within you. You are able to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I'm going to end it right there. I hope this helps clear up a few things. I love you guys, and I'll see you later.